Welcome back. Let's continue and have a look at the meaning behind all the elements of the Piedra del Sol. But first, I'd like to share with you the following quote that I took and translated from a book called La Verdadera Interpretación del Calendario Azteca, The True Interpretation of the Aztec Calendar, by D. E. Ibarra Grasso, which says, Everything that has been done so far in respect to the interpretation of this monument is in general terms partial and incomplete in its details, and at the same time completely wrong in terms of the overall interpretation of what is represented there. American studies have been a faulty science in regards to the study of man, especially in regards to his past, and in terms of racial classification, for these studies were imposed exclusively and in a totalitarian way since the first International Congress of Americanists held more than a century ago in France. This totalitarian imposition was the following. It was forbidden to present to the International Congress of Americanists interpretative works in which extracontinental comparisons were made with reference to the origin of the natives and their cultures. In 1792, Mexican astronomer, anthropologist and writer Antonio de León y Gama was the first person to interpret the Aztec calendar. He said that the central figure in the monolith represents the sun. Alexander von Humboldt, a Prussian polymath, came up next. Along with Antonio de León y Gama, they both said that the central figure in the Aztec calendar represents the sun, and since then, Every single author has repeated the same thing. It's the sun. 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 Of course, it's the sun. 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 But Ibarra Grasso tells us in his book that this is totally false. The authority of Humboldt imposed this interpretation as fact and nobody ever challenged the reality of the case. When it comes down to deciphering the Piedra del Sol or Aztec calendar, there are many arbitrary interpretations that have been proposed as true. So, what is it then? What does the center element represent? Huh? Well, it represents the earth. It represents the earth, and all the other elements in the monument represent the moon, the sun, and the planets revolving around it, and beyond that there is the sphere of the fixed stars, like this. Ah, in other words, the Aztec calendar, or Piedra del Sol, is a geocentric representation of the universe, entirely similar to the one obtained by Hellenistic science in the last centuries before our era. Okay, so the Piedra del Sol was commissioned by the great Latuani Axayacatl, in the year 13 Caña, only 42 years before the destruction of Tenochtitlan. Now, let's begin with the interpretation of the elements of the Piedra del Sol. So the first circle, we already said, represents the earth and not the sun, or Tonatiu, the sun god. Tlaltecutli, which is the goddess of the earth, she too has claws, same as the one sculpted on the monolith, same earpieces and the same gesture, the tongue sticking out. We see this gesture again in the depictions of the Tzitzimime, which originally were priestesses associated with creation, destruction and healing powers of the Aztecs. Here we see Tlaltecutli again, depicted in different ways, close and open mouth, tongue sticking out, and Cuatlicue too, with tongue sticking out, same with Iztapalotl. We can see other figures with a tongue out gesture in other ancient cultures too, representing goddess of creation or earth. This is the Lucerna Pensilis, an Etruscan bronze lamp found in Cortona, Italy. We see the central figure with a tongue sticking out. Of course, Kali in Indian culture. And we see it also in Athena's shield of the Parthenon. Same gesture. In both the American continent and the Old World, the figure with the tongue sticking out, the same as the earth, have been masculinized, 
and even separated from its original significance in relation to the earth. In Mexico too, the earth had been masculinized. Similar figures were also found not only in Mexico, the Old World or India, but also in Indonesia, Colombia and Peru. The second circle is called Nawiolin, or four movement. There are four glyphs inside the circle. Notice that they are positioned in an X configuration and not as a cross. Two of the glyphs are feminine and two are masculine, so we have perfect balance. They represent the four elements, the four seasons and the four mythological ages. And by the way, they are in accordance with the four geological eras too. Now we all in. Represent the four creations that preceded humanity, plus the fifth one, which is our current era. The four creations were First, the era of the Ocelotl, or Jaguar. The Jaguars devoured the giants who cohabited the earth, and the element is earth. Next is the element of water, represented by a water vessel and the head of the goddess of water sitting on top of it. This era was destructed when a great deluge flooded the face of the earth, transforming men into fish. I find very interesting that this glyph is represented by a water vessel with a goddess's head sitting on top of it. The goddess Ishtar of the Sumerians is directly linked to the great flood. She too holds a water vessel. Next is the element of air, represented by a hecatl, an ophidian head with mouth opened, blowing, symbol of Quetzalcoatl, god of air. This era came to an end when the gods went into a great fight, causing violent gusts of wind and whirlwinds, which destroyed the world. Humanity had to take refuge by climbing the trees, where they were transformed into apes. Next is the element of fire, represented by Xutecutli, god of fire, turquoise and time. Born from the navel of the universe, the color of the turquoise waters. This era was destructed after a dispute between the gods over the goddess of sex, flowers and corn. Once again, the gods entered into a great fight that ended with a rain of fire that lasted until the whole earth was burned into ashes. Among the Aztecs themselves, there has been at least two different ways of counting the succession of the ages. One is, the first era of jaguars or earth, second was the era of air, third is the era of water with a flood, and lastly was the era of fire. The other is, first was the era of fire, then earth with the jaguars, third was water, and lastly the era of air. On Hellenistic science of Egypt, their eras go water, earth, air, and fire. In the Popol Vuh, the succession of the eras goes earth, water, fire, and air. There are many other variations that extend also to authors uh, like Palacios, Escalona Ramos, Fernando de Alba Exlil Xochitl, and of course in the Vatican Codex, which also has a different uh, order of the succession of the, of the eras. The fifth creation or Quinto Sol is our current age. We don't know exactly when was the beginning of the fifth age, for there is a lot of speculation and widely varies among different authors. There is one account that says that El Quinto Sol will last for 5,250 years. And dates of its possible beginning dates as far back as 3,000 years before our era. Now let's have a look at the point of orientation of the Aztec calendar. In one of the orientation systems used by the Aztecs, the left side was where the sun was setting, that is the west, and the right was where the sun came out, the sun rays. This is enough to realize that the point arrow is facing south. South and midday equates the zenith, north and midnight equates the nadir, the center of the sky and the lowest point of the universe underneath the earth, what the Aztecs called Mictlan. The third circle, also called Tonalpo Wali, or count of days, 
represents the moon. This circle contains 20 glyphs representing 20 days of the Aztec month, Mestli, or moon. One Aztec month had 20 days, and one year had 18 months, so the Aztec year had 360 days, plus 5 extra days, and one extra still every 4 years. The Aztec month consisted of 4 weeks with 5 days each. The count of days began with Zipatli, or crocodile, 2. Hecatl, or wind, 3. Kali, or house, 4. Quetzpalin, or lizard, 5th Coatl or serpent, 6th Mikisli or death, 7 Masatl or deer, 8th Tochtli or rabbit, 9th Atl water, 10th Itzquintli dog, 11th Osomatli monkey, 12th Malinali or herb, 13th Acatl reed, 14th Ocelotl jaguar, 15. Quautli, eagle. 16. Quetzalcoatli, vulture. 17. Olin, motion. 18. Tecpatl, flint. 19. Quiahuitl, rain. 20. Xochitl, a flower. Okay, so we already mentioned that the Aztec month subdivided into four weeks of five days each. Therefore, the original beginning of the order of the days in the calendar must have been first Sipatli, Mikistli, Osomatli, and Koskakwautli. Second transition was Ehekatl, Masatl, Malinali, Olin. The third transition was Kali, Toshtli, Akatl, and Tekpatl. The Mayans were invaded by the Spaniards around 20 years later than the Aztecs, so they had time for a fourth transition, which was Quetzpalin, Acatl, Ocelotl, Quiahuitl. The divinatory calendar, or ritual, had weeks that constituted 13 days each called Trecenas. In antiquity, it was supposed that the lunar phases within a month reflected human life. Waxing crescent moon represented birth or infancy crocodile, and spring. Full moon represented youth and virility, Coscacuautli, or vulture, summer. Waning crescent moon represented old age, Osomatli, or monkey, in autumn. New moon represented death, gestation, and rebirth, with Mikisli, or death, in winter. Waxing crescent moon, west, Full moon south, waning crescent moon east, and new moon north. For the Aztecs, as we said earlier, the north was the Mictlan, the underworld. Ancient civilizations had the sun as feminine and the moon as masculine. We see that correspondence still today in Japanese religion and in the German world that designs the sun in feminine gender. Interpretation of the sun as masculine and the moon as feminine was adopted relatively late in time in the old world civilizations with Greece. Going back to the Etruscan lamp, we see the similarities of the circle of the moon in its position in regard the earth. The moon faces are represented as spiral-like figures. Next is the fourth circle, which represents Venus, known as the circle of King Kunzis, also identified as Quetzalcoatl the feathered serpent. In antiquity, in all Mesoamerica, Venus was taken as the precursor and the herald of the sun, the morning star, a great feathered serpent. These pointed elements are actually part of the next circle, which is the sun, and we are dealing with it later. Notice how Venus is represented, passing both in front of the sun and behind it, Remember, the Aztec calendar is a geocentric model of the cosmos. There are 10 King Kunzes visible on each side, making a total of 40. There are an extra 12 King Kunzes hidden behind the four pointed elements. The sum of all King Kunzes in total is 52, 
which is the number of years an Aztec century has, 52 King Kunces. It is the result to formally obtain the count of Venus in the calendar. The fifth circle represents the sun. We see 16 elements in total, 8 masculine and 8 feminine. These two at the bottom are hidden for the most part by the two heads of the great serpents located at the edge of the monolith, but nonetheless they are pretty easy to see. In the Etruscan lamp we saw before, we can see the sun expressed in both masculine and feminine rays. There are also 16 rays, 8 masculine and 8 feminine. In the Mesopotamian stele of Ur-Namu, we see the sun also represented with 16 alternate rays, 8 pointed and 8 flattened, in accordance with both calendars, the Etruscan and the Aztec. 16. The Aztecs subdivided the day in 16 hours. The Romans, for example, counted 16 hours. The Etruscans had 16 points of orientation upon the horizon, possibly applied also to count the transition of the sun around the earth. In ancient India, at the time of Alexander the Great, they too had 16 hours in the days. In contemporary indigenous people of Lake Titicaca, they distinguish 16 winds. Next circle represents Mercury, Seventh circle represents Mars. The eighth circle is Jupiter. The ninth circle is Saturn. The tenth circle are the two serpent dragons at the edge. They represent the fixed stars. Each head has a headpiece with seven stars or little circles we see. They represent the Aztec constellation called Shonequilli that is Sirius, Orion, and others close by. There are 18 glyphs on each serpent, 36 in total, and we see 10 points in each one of them. So 10 by 36 equals 360, presenting 360 days in the Aztec calendar. It also represents 360 degrees that a circle has. The Aztecs probably considered the two serpents in the calendar as a single one, but they placed it as two, not only for aesthetic reasons, but also because each serpent represents half of the year. At the very edge of the circle we find a thin circle of dots, and the result, if we count all the dots, we come to the result of 208, or four Aztec centuries of 52 years each. At the very top of the calendar, we find a quadrangular glyph indicating the year 13 Akatl, or Reed. This glyph no doubt is referring to the beginning of an era. Okay, so this is a scheme, or a drawing, of the birth of the sun in Hathor's temple in Egypt. Here is something a little bit interesting too. Although there is an inversion between the two calendars with the position of the heads, it is exactly comparable with the two serpent dragons of the Aztec calendar, and each of them too represent half of the year. We can see there are 36 figures depicted each one on top of little boats representing the 360 days of the year. And there you have it. There are yet so many mysteries to be deciphered about the Piedra del Sol or Aztec calendar, but one thing is for sure. The truth may have been remained hidden for a long time, but together we will find it by getting rid of all that is false. Thank you.